Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. As you can see, I'm in a different location from normal and that's just because I went on a tiny vacation, but don't worry, come Wednesday, I will be back to my normal videos. And if the mic quality isn't that great, I actually ended up having to buy a mic just for this video because my normal mic stand broke. So that explains that if you notice. Either way, we've got a bunch to cover. Starting with GPUs being postponed, the 6700 non-XT is RX and it gets tested, Intel's 14th gen performance, some of the first benchmarks on Intel's desktop are GPUs, and Intel's 13th gen is a monster with these benchmarks. But before I get to that, if you've been following the PC hardware industry for any amount of time, you know how hard it can be to keep up with all the announcements and release dates. There's always something right around the corner to where even the big releases can get confusing. Well, today I'm announcing the GamerMeld Notification Squad, and it's basically a way to remove all the clutter. Once you sign up, I'll send you notifications when new CPUs, GPUs, and other big hardware get announced with the release dates, as well as a notification when they actually release. I hope to let you know right when it happens so you can be one of the first to buy. And while it is via email, don't worry, I'm only going to send you important stuff. I'm not going to be spamming you with useless emails. So don't wait and be the first in line for new releases by visiting the link in the description below. Okay, it's news time and first up for today we have a bit of an update on Nvidia's upcoming GTX 1630. If you remember that GPU was actually set for release next week. But unfortunately the company, at least according to video cards, updated its embargo timeline and now it's essentially to be determined. You can see down here the on shelf date is to be determined, then marketing activity is also to be determined. If we look right here, the go to market kit was actually sent to board partners on May 31st. So they've had this for a little while now, but unfortunately the actual release has been postponed. Not only that, but the RTX 40 series looks to have been slightly postponed as well. I may have covered this in the past, but this looks to be confirmed by video cards. As you can see right here, it looks like the 4090 instead of August is actually coming in September, then the 4080 in October, and the 4070 in November. Obviously, it does suck to see it move back, but at least as of now, it's only a month from now, and according to video cards, it could come sooner. Next up for today, if you remember not long ago, I actually went over a new GPU from Sapphire that they had actually announced that was a 6700 non-XT GPU, but the odd part is that it also was missing the RX. You can see right here, Radeon 6700. Well, AMD actually released the specs of the new GPU, and as you can see right here, it is an RX 6700. So clearly Sapphire made a pretty huge mistake or potentially they announced it before they were supposed to and the RX designation wasn't supposed to be there but AMD changed their mind. Either way, if we look back, we can see that now completely the exact same SKU 6700 except they now added the RX. So it is the RX 6700 non-XT GPU. And not only that, but we actually have some of the first benchmarks for the GPU. You can see right here, uh, and this is actually after a new driver that essentially added support for this SKU. And you can see that with the max power settings, it got 11,414 points in time spy, which when we compare it to the 6650 XT, so Andy's newest 50 series GPUs, the 6650 XT, the newest 6700 non-XT got around 10% faster performance. It's something like 9.5. Either way, it's 10,427 versus 11,414. So nothing to write home about, but right in between the 6650 XT and 6700 XT. Next up, I have a really interesting story about not Intel's next-gen CPUs, I'll actually get to that in just a second, but their next next-gen CPUs, or 14th gen Meteor Lake. Intel recently announced some pretty interesting stuff about it, and before I get to that, if you remember, Meteor Lake is really interesting already because it's gonna be one of Intel's first chiplet-based CPUs. When we go down here, you can see Meteor Lake with 
Favaros. So this is Intel's answer to AMD's Ryzen. They should be able to lower costs a good bit by using a multi-chip module design. So they have higher yield rates because they'll use much lower modules to combine them because the bigger you get, the lower the yield rates. But if you just combine multiple smaller chips, it makes things significantly cheaper. But they actually gave us some more information you can see, for one, they actually showed us the compute tile as well as shut off Meteor Lake's packaging. But even better than that, at the IEEE symposium, they also told us that Intel's upcoming 14th gen should get 20% higher frequencies at the same power level as Alder Lake. Now, notice that's not compared to 13th gen, which is Raptor Lake. It is going to be the older Alder Lake, but that is still fairly impressive. Next up for today, MSI made a pretty big boo-boo where they actually leaked some of the first benchmarks on Intel's upcoming desktop ARC GPUs. As you can see right here, they were marketing an upcoming PC, and you can see it comes with an i5-12400F, as well as an Intel A380. And what's interesting about this is that they actually shared. Now, really quickly, I will say that MSI took this down very fast, but luckily not before we got pretty much all the information. And as you can see right here, they shared some FPS. Now, keep in mind that this is the A380, so it isn't exactly a higher end model. They were actually offering two of them, one regular clocked one, then an overclocked version with six gigabytes. Either way, when we look, so we have 85 FPS in Narica, Blade Point, League of Legends at over 200 FPS, PUBG at over 94, and Overwatch at over 100 FPS. Now, unfortunately, all of this is done at either low or medium settings at 1080p, so they're really not that great. I would say right around a 1050, maybe a little bit better than a 1050. So nothing to write home about, but pretty clearly they have some massive work still left to be done. Now, this should actually be for their upcoming release, but we already know that they're gonna be releasing in China first, likely to kind of make things a little bit better over time, but it is still kind of odd. This is the marketing, so I wouldn't expect it to be too much better than this. I don't know. Once again, this is their lower end GPU, but it's really not all that great. With that said, one thing that is pretty amazing is a new leak for Intel's upcoming 13,900. So this is their Raptor Lake CPUs and it is not their K model. The story originally comes from a post by Psysoft where you can see unfortunately they have since taken it down, but not before we got the information. Basically they took some benchmarks that were a part of the Psysoft database and compared it to other CPUs. And when we look, we can see which really quickly before I get to that, remember that 13th gen Intel is going to be upping the core count. So they're going to have the same eight performance cores, but instead of eight efficiency cores, they're going to have 16. So this is a 24 core 32 thread CPU. Now, moving on to the benchmarks, as you can see, we have this right here, which is the arithmetic native, and it's really impressive. Starting things off, you can see the 13,900 actually got between, I believe it's somewhere around 30 and 50% faster than the 12,900. Now, you'll obviously notice that it isn't too much faster than the 5900X, but there's a massive caveat here. This CPU is only clocked at 3.7 gigahertz. That's significantly less than what we expect, which would likely be around 5.5 gigahertz, maybe a little bit further. And when we look, 5.5 gigahertz is nearly 50% faster than what it was actually at here, which was 3.7. So the final performance should be significantly better for Intel's next gen CPU. So it got around 30 to 50% faster than the 12,900, but that's at such low clocks. With that said, when we move down here, we can see that it's only around five to 6% faster. And of course, AMD's gets significantly better here. But when it comes to these benchmarks, I really think it's best not to compare it across platforms just because they have significantly different architectures and things like that. And these don't always translate perfectly to 
to real world performance. Obviously on most all professional workloads, gaming, things like that, the 12,900 does significantly better than it's doing here against the 5900X. So that's kind of one big reason I think it's best to compare it to last gen. And here, once again, like I said, we're talking something like five to 6% difference but once again, we're looking at significantly lower clocks. Basically, Intel's next-gen CPUs are looking extremely impressive, and AMD may really need to be worried. So while that does it for today, once again, I know this is a bit of an unusual video. I do apologize that I also posted this a little bit later than usual. But anyway, let me know what you think about Intel's next-gen CPUs. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.